What's up guys, I'm Ben from All Fan Tech, and the Sony RX Zero Mark II was just announced on Monday, March 25th. No, no, I was not cool enough to get my hands on one of those early review units like those other big fancy YouTubers, but I have a lot of experience with my GoPro 7 Black and other cameras, and I thought it'd be really interesting to compare the main specs and features between the two, Sony and GoPro, see how they stack up. First up, pricing. Of course, this one is important. GoPro 7 normally at about $400, but lately it's been on sales about $350, currently sitting at $377, Amazon Prime, all links will be down below. The Sony on the other hand is at $700, almost double the price of the GoPro. To put that into perspective, you could buy almost two of these or one GoPro with a ton of extra accessories. Also keep in mind, Sony is seemingly very purposefully not calling this camera an action camera. It's more geared towards vloggers and YouTubers. A camera yielding much more premium professional looking photos and videos over a GoPro. And for good reason, which we'll cover in a minute. What will the new GoPro 8 look like? Well, the 7 was released end of September, so we still have about six months or so. Maybe an articulating screen or swappable lenses or higher quality GP2 sensor? I have my wishlist items. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments. So regarding those key specs, GoPro is an ultra wide angle, right? That's the purpose of an action camera, squeezing as much of landscape and action into camera frame. And also remember this wide angle field of view is approximately 120 degrees horizontal, making the shot feel very immersive. The Sony by comparison is fixed focal length as well at about 24 millimeters or about 74 degrees wide. That's almost half the field of view of GoPro, quite the difference. I hear some people saying it's just way too narrow when you're hand holding and pointing it back at yourself. Any vlogger would wish it was a bit wider. Now back to the basics. The new Sony has a massively large one inch stacked camera sensor, and that's the same as what's in here, the RX100 series. It's a big sensor and a small, compact, durable body. Very impressive. Huge potential for cinematic video and high quality photography. The headlining feature is that flip up screen. It tilts up and down 180 degrees. Very sweet. I read one guy's perspective, which had some merit in my book. The GoPro has such a wide angle lens that it's much easier to just point it back at yourself and hopefully you'll get whatever you want in camera frame. You wouldn't need that flip up screen necessarily. However, that's not 100% true because there's a big difference between just squeezing my head somewhere in camera frame versus actually framing it up exactly where you want or need it. And sure, GoPro has that wirelessly connect to your phone for a remote viewing feature, but I hate the hassle and never use the app. Sometimes you just can't beat an articulating screen. Now, if you remember back in the old camcorder days, this was basically the standard. So of course, GoPro does not have that tilting screen yet. However, I think it's a major mistake on the Sony that it's not touchscreen like the GoPro. Now sure, buttons are sometimes nicer to have, like for underwater control, for example, but it should have still supported touchscreen as well, in my opinion. With touchscreen on our phones and on our smart fridges and basically everywhere, I feel like it was a pretty big missed feature. And even though the menus look pretty in-depth with nice customization and control, it looks sorta of difficult to navigate on such a tiny screen. I'm guessing it would have been better to redesign that user interface. Now speaking of water, yes, the Sony is super rugged, shockproof, waterproof, ultra compact, and I think that's why it feels natural to compare it to the GoPro, but the more I compare, the differences grow. Both cameras have image stabilization, which is super important to have with these small handheld shaky cameras. Unfortunately on this one, I can't show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison as I normally would, but in my research, so far, people are saying that the GoPro is still the winner. The GoPro can record up to 4K 60 FPS. The Sony maxes out at 4K 30. And that's another bummer in my opinion. If our wimpy little phones can record 4K 60, I think the Sony should as well. I understand with its larger sensor, overheating is a key issue, but come on, even GoPro can do that 4K 60. One sweet feature that the Sony supports that GoPro does not is ultra slow motion up to 1000 frames per second. Now I really hope GoPro can include this in their next gen model. Both cameras can record time lapse and wirelessly transfer files to your phone. 
The Sony has audio input, which is a huge feature for recording crisp, clear, better audio, and I'm very happy it offers this great feature. I think GoPro can do the same, but you need to purchase an extra microphone adapter. <clears throat> Even the RX100 can't do audio input. One last big difference is autofocus. Now the GoPro is fixed focus to infinity, so on the positive side, you don't have to worry if your subject is in or out of focus, but instead you lose that option for creative control of shallow depth of field. The Sony, of course, is on the opposite end. It has much tighter depth of field, more cinematic and professional looking shots. However, I was pretty surprised when I heard this and I hope I'm wrong or a firmware update can fix this, but people are saying the RX0 does not support continuous autofocus while recording, which is sort of funny because if you go watch those other hands-on reviews from other YouTubers, a ton of their footage is out of focus possibly because of this exact reason. It looks like you can still set manual focus or near or far focus, but does it seriously not have continuous autofocus while recording? I just don't get it. There's gonna be a lot of mad people out there, possibly when they go back to reviewing their footage and key sections of their shots might be out of focus. Okay, okay, so I don't wanna be dogging on Sony for this one. Some of the footage and photos I've seen so far look crazy impressive, especially how compact and portable that little camera is. It fits right inside your pocket, and I love that tilt-up LCD screen, but pricing is sorta high at $700. Ultimately, I don't think it's a GoPro action camera killer, but well done to Sony for not even calling it one. The RX0 Mark II is probably more in the arena of the RX100 series. Even this camera doesn't have microphone input, and this one is much more expensive. However, this has the optical zoom and other differences, so it's an interesting comparison. What do you guys think of the new Sony RX0 Mark II, and what do you guys think we'll see in the next gen GoPro 8? Consider subscribing and ring the bell to stay up to date on all my future tech videos, and until next time, let's live authentic.